What's going on? It's your boy Matt, back with some more boxing. Well, what do we got here today? Look at here, look at here. Terrence Duck Crawford done hooked up with Oscar De La Hoya. Ah oh, man, ah oh, man, we gotta talk about this for y'all. So first off, this is par for the course for exactly what I was talking about in my video with Oscar De La Hoya. If you see, he laid out a plan talking about fighting Rocha and fighting Ortiz and leading up to the Spence fight. That's more wolf tickets, more selling, selling bum fights to lead up to this hypothetical fight that you don't even got guaranteed. And Crawford is on board for it because it allowed him to fight bums. So what they telling you they planning on doing is this. Making a bunch of insignificant fights. Rocha just fought Blair Cobb, but I guess that's right up Crawford Alley. Or he could just fight Cobb. And then uh, fighting Ortiz. If you look at Ortiz's resume before he got to Crawford, Ortiz ain't no threat. Ortiz ain't really even fought nobody. Ortiz, Crawford would be Ortiz's first test. You know what I'm saying? First real test. And, um... That's right up Terrence Crawford Alley. And it's supposed to be leading to a Spence fight. Now, this is how you know it's a bunch of BS on top of that because he said originally when he was talking all that shit about Al Heyman, you remember De La Hoya came out and he was talking about he was backing Terrence Crawford and he's ready to speak his truth and all that. Like, bro, shut your crackhead ass up. You ain't got no truth to speak. You still sitting up lying to people about your fake ass abs you got. And then you want to sit up talking about you ready to speak the truth. You lie about weird shit like that. Wait, does he? Bro, really? De La Hoya's got some fake abs. Gonna, uh, yeah, something's going on, man. Oscar De La Hoya didn't have abs throughout his boxing career. Look at him now. Get that guy. Bro, what's going on there? It's either either he's got some fake abs or he's going semaglutide. <laughs> One or the other. I mean, the thing is, it's like he's not that low body fat. This is why it's confusing. If you, like, look at his body, like his arms and his shoulders, when a guy has abs like that, generally they're really shredded. That's weird, yeah. Yeah, generally you have low body fat in your chest. Like, everything looks defined. If your abs look that defined. Yeah. Um, what I did was I, you know, I got a little help from a doctor. You know, a little, little... It's, it's called, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's called uh, lipo uh, sculpting. Wow. I don't know. We're explaining abdominal etching. Liposuction is used on a patient's abdomen or stomach in a way in which the abdominal muscles are recreated by contouring the fatty tissue on the abdominal wall. They actually go in with a little tiny needle, right? And it sucks up, it sucks up your fat in between your abs. Wow. So what they, happens is that it, 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 they just pop. Liposuction is used on a patient's abdomen or stomach in a way in which the abdominal muscles are recreated by contouring the fatty tissue on the abdominal wall. And so, you know, my body fat level's low, but, you know, when you do that sculpting of the abs, I mean, they pop out like there's no tomorrow. So everybody thinks they're fake and this and that. It's not possible, first of all, to have fake abs. Yes. Uh, but, but if you etch them, they just pop like there's no tomorrow, man. So by removing fatty tissue in certain locations and leaving fatty tissue in other locations, a surgeon is able to give the appearance of underlying abdominal muscles even though those abdominal muscles are not really showing and may or may not actually exist i can gain i can gain 200 pounds and i'll still have my ass oh my god wow <laughs> what a you know, because once that fat once the fat move um then it's like it can't grow it cannot grow back in that in that particular area so 
it's gonna grow somewhere else, you know, behind my fucking shoulder or you know, like top of my head or personally I don't perform this procedure uh, because I believe that a better alternative to that would be to get rid of as much of the fatty tissue as possible and then have my patient exercise in order to build up the abdominal muscles post-operatively. Now, if you lie about weird shit like that, what's your incentive to tell the truth about stuff that's way more important? You sitting up and the lies you tell are easily debunked, but you don't care because you're a degenerate and really you just play off of people's ignorance. You really get a kick out of playing off the fact that you got a large Hispanic fan base that's going to back you no matter what. Terrence Crawford only appeal to you is dividing Crawford. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that sat by the door and that's where y'all go get him at every time y'all need him. His only appeal is this anti-PBC stance. BLK Prime had him over there and he was talking about PBC. What you gonna have him talking about over here if he signs with Gold Boy? PBC this, PBC that. The same thing you talk about, Oscar. But then you want people to believe that somewhere down the line you plan on making this big fight with Errol Spence. Really, all you wanna do, Oscar, is keep your name relevant in some boxing conversations and sell some lackluster fights. That's it. It's the same scam like I talked about the day before. You always need sound bites. You always taking pictures. This look like the picture you and Ryan took with the contract. You know, y'all stay taking these pictures, man, and selling these wolf tickets. And it's right up Bud Crawford's alley. And the meanwhile, the more Spitz just mind this business, the more people try and go after him. Spitz learn from Al, like, let your money talk. And the loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room. They always talking. De La Hoya always woofing and beefing and talking about he, he need his, he need to take thong pictures. And he one of those people, he remind me of the My Pillow guy, the crackhead My Pillow guy. He always gotta be saying something or doing something, and when he not moving, he back in rehab or he back having some type of personal problems. So now he hooked up with Terrence Crawford to sell these fake wolf tickets. He always woofing at something. He left off, leaving us off wondering about signing the Tank Davis contract. Once he got our attention about that, now he's using that to draw our attention away to other stuff. Now, what you're going to find out in the end is that he messes around and doesn't even sign the Tank Davis contract because he's distracting y'all. He know what we want to hear about. He know what the, the next big fight is we waiting on. He throwing all these other hypotheticals out there. He like, what about Crawford and Ortiz in, in um, Cowboy Stadium and, and stuff like that. Terrence Crawford likes stuff like that. I'm going to start calling him Bug Crawford because he just want to hang around and hang around and... He really don't want to fight nobody. He just want to be mentioned, and he just want to be able to talk down on other fighters. You know what I mean? And um, for everybody, like, it's so crazy because, man, everybody got a better record than Terrence Crawford at welterweight. Everybody, even if you look at the people he beat. If you look at Kell Brook, if you look at... If you look at Sean Porter, you know what I'm saying? They all got better records than Terrence Crawford. This is how you can tell about the quality of somebody's opponents. If Errol Spence fights a fighter, and after Errol Spence beats them, they still a threat to other fighters. That just means Errol Spence is a real good fighter. Now, if Errol Spence fight a fighter, and Errol Spence beat him, and after that, they just drop off the face of the earth, or they go on a losing streak, that lets you know they was a bum, you know? You look at Terrence Crawford and the fighters he fight. After he fight him, like, who is David Avenesian gonna fight next? What's his big fight he got coming up? He don't got no big fights coming up. He already got knocked out by people that Terrence Crawford knocked out. So, you know, this move right here is another clout chase. This is a clout alliance. Shook ones. This is an alliance of a dying promotion. Golden Boy is dying. And they know Bud is useful for keeping some sound bites and keeping their name in the Spence conversation. Bud can't make no money over there at uh, Golden Boy fighting uh, Alexis Rocha and, um, you know, Rashidi Ellis and Blair Cobb. Golden Boy don't got nobody over there, you know, but that's what Bud like, though. So, you know, we gonna leave it at that, man. Bunch of bullshit going on in the game. Um, more duck tactics. Uh, basically trying to move as far away from making the fight as they can while planning to keep Spence's name in his mouth. And, you know, they already plan on disrupting it and blaming the PBC. A fight with Rocha and um, Ortiz brings you no closer to fighting Errol Spence. 
But that's exactly what you want. And then you want to blame Al Heyman. I'm telling y'all, blueprint right now. Make things adjacent to the fight and always blame Al Heyman for it. That's it. It's that simple. That's all I got for y'all. And remember, you can play games, but you can't play boxing. I'm out. Right hand on top. Right hand on top.